Hi friends, welcome to all of you. So in this series uh, of the molecular biology lectures, uh, this is the 11th lecture, which will be uh, discussing the transcription machinery in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So beginning this lecture with the introduction to transcription, we know that transcription from the central dogma, it is the middle process of the central uh, dogma. Uh, second to replication and it involves the synthesis of a RNA molecule which is usually single stranded and the synthesis takes place uh, from the information derived from the parental double stranded uh, DNA molecule. As we already know that DNA in itself is a double helix contains two strands however both strands cannot serve as the information for the synthesis of an RNA. So only one of them, one of the strands from the DNA molecule will serve as the information coding system. This uh, template or the strand of a DNA is called as the antisense strand or the template strand. The template strand of the DNA molecule serves as the information which is coded by the polymerases to synthesize RNA from it. As you can see in the picture that um, uh, RNA is synthesized from the only one of the strands of the DNA. Other serves as the just for the stability purpose for the DNA. So the other strand will be called as the non-template strand and it's sometimes also referred to as sense strand because the RNA which is synthesized has the sequence similar to that of this sense strand, non-template strand. Transcription like DNA follows directional rule. That means that uh, it is synthesized uh, in the five prime to three prime direction. And the template DNA, uh, which serves as the information for the coding of RNA is read from the three prime direction to the five prime direction. And the synthesis of the RNA, which takes place on this template strand has to be uh, in a five prime to three prime direction. That means that three prime end of the newly synthesized RNA is the one which is extended by the addition of free RNA nucleotides. So uh, taking an example of this sequence, which uh, can be the sequence of the uh, DNA strand, which has to be uh, decoded through transcription. We know that only one strand will serve as the template strand. So here this strand, the, this sequence that is three prime to five prime sequence will serve as the template strand that is coding strand. It is the uh, sequence which is uh, decoded by uh, the machinery to form RNA and hence the RNA will have this sequence which is being coded on the base of this template and it represents the other strand. Hence this strand is also called as coding strand because its uh, gene sequence is almost similar to that of the RNA uh, except that in presence of T in DNA here uh, in RNA it is U. Further moving down uh, the polymerases which are involved in the transcription are actually the DNA dependent RNA polymerases which I had already told you in the previous lectures as well. So it means that this polymerase utilizes DNA as a template and synthesizes RNA on that information. Also in eukaryotes, the, this is not it. The transcription uh, and the decoding of a DNA into RNA is not the whole process. The RNA which is synthesized is immature and then it is matured through post-transcriptional modifications. Usually it involves uh, three process in eukaryotes. That is the five prime uh, capping, uh, three prime polyadenylation tail is added and then the introns are excised also. So these three processes uh, uh, happen after the transcriptional process in eukaryotes, hence called as the post-transcriptional modifications. And these are uh, involved uh, to change the immature RNA into the mature RNA so that it can be fed to a translational machine uh, to generate proteins for the function of the cell. Transcription has three phases, initiation, elongation and termination as you can see in this uh, accompanying diagram. These three processes are involved in the decoding of the uh, DNA into RNA. 
and it involves uh, the usage of the DNA template, uh, which is read in 3.5 prime direction. It also needs uh, four different types of ribonucleosides, phosphates like uh, ATP, GTP, UTP, and CTP. And it also needs uh, certain ions like magnesium and zinc to stabilize the whole complex, which is transcribing the DNA into RNA molecule. to take place the DNA has to be melted at a particular position that position where the DNA melting it takes place is called as the promoter region uh, of the gene which is to be transcribed so the DNA duplex has to unwind and it forms uh, by unwinding it forms a special kind of a structure uh, which is called as the transcriptional bubble this uh, bubble can be represented here in the uh, diagram which uh, involves the duplex of a DNA uh, to be separated from each other so that the RNA molecule can be synthesized on the template strand. Usually uh, during transcriptions in E. coli it has been found that RNA polymerase uh, needs about 18 base pairs of the DNA to be unwound and uh, in these 18 base pairs of DNA around 8 to 9 base pairs of the RNA is associated with the uh, DNA to form the DNA-RNA hybrid uh, within this bubble. As you can see in the picture here, the DNA-RNA uh, hybrid is formed within this transcriptional bubble and the length uh, of the transcriptional bubble between the polymerases is around 18 base pair plus minus 1. Further, the elongation process of this uh, transcript in the E. coli polymerase happen at a rate of uh, around 50 to 90 nucleotides per second. The machinery which is needed uh, for the process of transcription is definitely the DNA uh, dependent RNA polymerases. In E. coli, uh, which are the simplest of the cells in prokaryotes, uh, this uh, RNA polymerase is a single large uh, polymerase which uh, does the uh, transcription of all the genes. This uh, large polymerase is a multimeric uh, subunit complex of uh, five core units of alpha 2, beta, beta dash and omega which make up uh, around 40 kilodaltons in weight. Then sixth unit is also associated with this which is called as sigma factor and together these six uh, subunits make a holo functional holo enzyme. This functional holoenzyme can be represented here as you can see here. Uh, contains six different uh, subunits together with the, uh, this uh, sigma factor. Sigma factor is important for this holoenzyme functionality initially. Why? Because this uh, helps um, the holoenzyme, the polymerase, to recognize a specific site in the genes, which is called as the promoter region of the gene. Uh, this promoter region uh, is AT rich region, which needs to be identified and so that the polymerase will bind to it and melt it at this AT rich region. Without the sigma factor, the polymerase is not able to recognize these promoter regions or they have a definitely low affinity for these promoter regions. So sigma factor sometimes is also called as the eye of the uh, RNA polymerase in E. coli. Different subunits of this uh, E. coli polymerase uh, are coded by different genes. Like for example, alpha subunit is product of RPO gene and is required for the proper promoter recognition as well as binding of the polymerase to this promoter region. Beta subunit is produced by the RPOB gene and required for the transcription initiation and elongation. It's inhibited by rifampicin and streptolytidin, which play a role as the uh, antibiotics uh, um, in uh, prokaryotes and beta beta uh, dash subunit is produced uh, by the RPOC gene it plays a role in catalytic function of the polymerase and it binds uh, to zinc ions which facilitate this function so if we give an antibiotic uh, like rifampicin as uh, used in um, TB therapy uh, we are bound to inhibit the beta subunit and hence the transcription in those microorganisms. Knowing that the sigma factor is only regarded as the eye of the whole uh, 
uh, enzyme holo enzyme of the e coli polymerases it is required only for the initiation that is uh, recognition of the promoter region why because it decreases the affinity of the core enzyme for non specific dna and hence uh, it increases the affinity of this holo enzyme to bind to a particular site the promoter region of the genes and once it does so it is not required for the further elongation process so after the initiation transcription initiation uh, sigma factor is uh, usually lost from the holo enzyme and the rest of the pentamer functions to do the transcription elongation further rna polymerases lack proof reading activities as was the function of the dna polymerase hence uh, the error rate is higher than the dna replication usually uh, every error uh, occurs every 10 4 to 10 raised power 5 ribonucleotides incorporated in the uh, rna transcription machinery in eukaryotes uh, as we know that there is a definite complexity involved the um, transcription machinery is much complex than that of prokaryotes it is uh, divided among different kinds of an polymerases here usually three different uh, kinds of polymerases are found in the eukaryotes and they are coded by different types of genes uh, having different kinds of subunits which come together to do the function of the transcription they were identified initially by chromatographic purification and then characterized also by the sensitivity towards the fungal alpha amenitin which is a fungal toxin alpha amenitin and uh, depending upon the sensitivity to alpha amenitin we can categorize the different kinds of polymerases based on that RNA polymerase 1 which is located near the nucleoli of the eukaryotic cell it is insensitive to alpha amenitin and it is usually transcribing the polycystronic r rna ribosomal rna called as pre ribosomal rna which then is uh, utilized for the synthesis of 5.8s 18s and 28s r rna so uh, in simple terms rna polymerase 1 synthesizes ribosomal rna predominantly then there is rna polymerase 3 which is the most important one because it synthesizes the uh, mrna molecule from the dna template it is located near nucleoplasm and is very sensitive to alpha amenitin and uh, it uh, usually transcribes all protein coding genes that in turn means that it uh, synthesizes it synthesizes mrna molecule on the dna then there is third one which is located near nucleoplasm as well but it is not uh, that much sensitive to alpha amenitin and is categorized as polymerase 3 it transcribes usually trna and some of the rna molecules like 5s rna u6 uh, small nuclear ribonuclear rna and so on and so forth you can see the different subunits of the eukaryotic polymerase second polymerase third and polymerase one Uh, here in the diagram you will see that they are coded by uh, different kinds of genes as well and they have different constituents uh, and complexity is also uh, more than that of the uh, prokaryotic cells therefore we can safely say that all three different types of polymerases in the eukaryotes are uh, some molecular assembly is containing more than 12 uh, subunits and the genes coding for these uh, largest subunits of each uh, rna polymerase have homology to each other all three eukaryotic polymerases contain subunits which have homology to also to uh, e coli um, core rna polymerases in its functionality it was pretty much it for the transcription introduction and machinery in the next lecture i will be focusing on the process of transcription If you like the contents of the video you can order the book Molecular Biology and Biotechnics from Amazon it's available both in Kindle and paperback format and do subscribe to my channel uh, for further uh, videos which I will upload in due time